20 mid-journey tips that you probably didn't know about. Let's get started with number one, right-clicking on the mid-journey website. Here's a fun one to start, and I discovered this way too late. When you're creating images on the mid-journey website, instead of clicking on an image to expand it and then choosing another feature like remix or upscale, you can right-click on the thumbnail and access these features from there. But you'll notice on mine only variation and remix appear, you might see different options. You can think of these as quick options and if you want the rest of the features to show up here, you need to activate them under creation actions. And a little bonus tip here, this is brand new as far as I'm aware, you can select up to three images to appear in ranked pairs. Maybe this is a chance to submit images to appear on the homepage? I'm not sure how often these submissions will be reset, as you can see, I only have two remaining because I already clicked this once. Please let me know if you know any more about this. Tip number two, a photo booth prompt. I've got a cool prompt for you to try and special thanks to Metropa, I found this while exploring the Midjourney website. The basic gist of the prompt is a black and white photo booth film strip. Then you can choose a subject, maybe a character or an animal and describe how they look succinctly. Maybe just say they're dressed like a gentleman. And after your description, you should mention that the subject will have different expressions in each photo. That's it for the words in your prompt but there are four important parameters that you should try. First, maybe make sure that you're in some sort of vertical aspect ratio. I like five by seven for these images. Second, I think you should try style raw. Third, make sure you add a little chaos into your prompt. Nothing crazy, just like a value of two to four. And fourth, I think you should try your personalization code. Have fun. Tip number three, random, random, random. I'm sure most of you know that you can ask for random art styles by using dash dash s ref random in your prompt, but did you know that you can add more than one random? Like you can write dash dash s ref random 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 and it will blend three random art styles for you. Is this necessary? Absolutely not, but it is something fun you can do in mid journey. So we could type something like batman dash dash s ref random 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 and when we hit enter mid journey will have combined four random codes for us and look how cool that picture is. I'm a big fan of exploring mid-journey through this technique. Tip number four, I like to call this the staircase. And this is a cool workflow for you to explore mid-journey. It actually involves the previous tip, using sref random. You can choose your subject or you can use a void prompt, just a couple of symbols like two quotation marks. Midjourney will take the word random and turn it into a style code for you. Pretty standard, right? Once you've made the first generation, you're going to reuse the prompt and then insert the word random again. It's really cool to see how the image evolves as each style becomes more diluted. Let me show you how it works. Let's try a void prompt so that's just two quotation marks. We're going to type dash dash sref random and hit enter. And there you go, Midjourney chose this random art style for us and it is associated with this code right here. What I want you to do is click on use right below the prompt and then I simply want you to type the word random after that code. Again, you can copy the word random using control or command C just to make this easier. We'll hit enter and then now while this was generating we could click use again, go up to our prompt after our codes and hit control or command V to paste the word random into the prompt. Hit enter and we're gonna do the same thing a couple of more times. So we'll start with images like these at the bottom and as we add more style codes, more steps to the staircase, we'll get images like these and beyond. Isn't it cool? Let me show you some more examples though. I like these a lot. We start with these really gritty, dark purple, pink pictures down here at the bottom. And then as we develop the staircase, we start turning into these. And I'd say these are very different from when we first started. And then take a look at how Batman develops here. Go from the bottom to the top. As we add more and more style codes, look at what it turns into. Isn't that wild? Look how cool this is. That's like one of my favorite pictures and it came through all of those codes. Tip number five. Pixel dimensions. This is an extra handy tip if you're using Midjourney for any specific project and you need exact dimensions. Let's say you need to create a banner that is 940 pixels by 335. You can do that by using dash dash AR 940 by 335. Pretty cool, right? Big thanks to Eurosocial for teaching me that a long time ago. And if you want more tips along those lines, and if you want someone to walk you through everything, you can check out my beginner course in the description below. And when you do this with big numbers, Midjourney will find the lowest value that is associated with that ratio. In this case, 188 by 67 is the same as 940 by 335. Tip number six, 
Ask for art. This one is kind of silly, but the impact of the word art on your generation is not insignificant. Check out Art Deco versus Art Deco Art. When you see the difference, that's pretty stark, pretty crazy, pretty stunning, big contrast between the two, with one change, that being the word art. I guess what I'm saying is that if you're trying to generate a specific style, but it's not coming through in the way you were hoping for, maybe the word art will get you closer to your goal. Tip number seven, main subject choice. Special thanks to Sideways Design for this tip. It's a different way to view how you write prompts and a different way to direct the composition of your scene. The basic lesson is that the first thing you mention in your prompt will be considered the main subject the emphasis, and depending on what you emphasize, the bot will generate different looking scenes. The example that was shared with me was how a person walking in the city park will compose an image that has a person in the center and fairly close to the camera, whereas a city park with a person walking will widen the angle to view more of the park, with the person landing somewhere else in the frame, usually farther away from the viewer. I think this is a fascinating insight that can give us some extra control and maybe you didn't realize it was even possible. Check out these examples. A cat sleeping on a sunny windowsill. Pretty standard, right? A cute cat front and center. But rearranging the prompt just a little bit to a sunny room with a cat sleeping on a windowsill, and we put our emphasis on the room rather than the cat. Quite a big difference in composition, wouldn't you say? Or this example. A guitarist strumming under a street lamp at night. We see the man as the focus of the frame. Whereas you could change it to a dimly lit street with a guitarist playing. And we get these beautiful shots, and that's all you needed to do was rearrange the prompt just a little bit. Tip number eight. Subtle Remix. Special thanks to Six Act Structure for this next tip, and it involves getting the most out of Midjourney's two most recent models. A familiar opinion online is that version 6 made more realistic looking characters. It's kind of hard to explain, but version 6.1 looks a little off when it comes to skin tones, but it still provides better looking images overall. Let me show you a quick comparison. Here's version 6, and there's version 6.1. Same seed, same photo, just it looks a little different, right? Version 6 to 6.1. Something's a little off. So what you can do is generate your character in version 6 and then use the subtle remix to bring that character into version 6.1. Subtle remix is extremely subtle and we can use that to our advantage with this trick. All you need to do is generate in version 6, click remix subtle on your character, and then we're simply going to add 0.1 after version 6. And when we hit enter, you'll be greeted with generations like this, and maybe you'll be more happy with one of these images. Tip number 9, character sheet. I have a character sheet prompt trick for you, and I know that mentioning multiple expressions or poses is quite common, but did you know that specifically referring to these poses can help create a 360 degree view of your character? Write a prompt like this, a character sheet for your character, in different poses and angles, including front view, side view, and back view. You'll also want to use a wider aspect ratio for something like this. 16 by 9 is okay, but I think 3 by 1 might be even better. That's pretty cool, right? Take a look at this other example, I think it worked out even better. Here's a retro Roaring Twenties wizard, and look how it includes every angle that you could possibly ask for. I think that happened because we included those references in the prompt directly. Tip number 10 font creation. Here is a really niche tip for when you want to create your own fonts. The basic idea is that we're going to create one letter to start, but then we want to create other letters in the same style. And I taught people how to do this by using permutations, like a curly bracket, then A in quotation marks, comma, B in quotation marks, etc, etc. But that's a little painful to write out every time, so I'm thankful for Reiki76 who pointed out a much simpler way of generating these extra letters. You can write them like this. First, put a quotation mark and then place all of your letters inside of the curly brackets. Make sure you close it with quotation marks and that will run all of those letters for you. That's a super niche tip, but it's super helpful to that particular workflow. Tip number 11, spot the difference. Here's another extremely niche tip for you, but this is how you can create the idea of a spot the difference activity page. 
The basic idea is to create a detailed scene, right? Like a messy room or a knolling photo of a bunch of objects. And then we are going to use the mid journey editor or in painting as it's known as and simply select a few of these random objects. Mid journey will change around those small instances that you selected and you'll have a before and after spot the difference page. Now, I don't want to hype this up too much because Midjourney isn't that great with small details as you can see here, but there's no reason why this workflow won't be more effective in the future. You could even mix and match different parts of the pictures since you'll get at least four for each generation. All you need is a basic program like Canva or even Microsoft Paint. And maybe you don't even need to sell these professionally if you want to keep some kids busy and develop their attention to detail by creating scenes in their favorite art style. This trick will certainly help with that. Tip number 12, self-portrait. Check out this self-portrait prompt. A happy artist stands in front of their self-portrait. A cool digital frame holds the portrait. I use different stylized values. I tried style raw. You can mention different frames that will hold the picture. Granted, you can't use this with a picture of yourself right now, but it does work pretty well with existing mid-journey images, as in using character reference. The mid-journey team has straight up said that character reference works better with native mid-journey images. Now, I still don't know how the system could possibly know that, but I think it's pretty clear when you test this yourself. Tip number 13. Photogram. Try photogram in your prompt. The results are so pretty. You could say photogram of your subject or your subject photogram. It doesn't really matter. Midjourney will get the idea. And to take this definition from Google, the photogram is an image made without a camera by placing an object directly onto the surface of a light sensitive material and then exposing it to light. It's definitely a mix of like x-ray vision and surreal assets. Tip number 14, organization. Creating a lot of images can get pretty messy, especially when you're trying to find your style reference codes, considering most of these codes are like 10 digits long. We can take advantage of one specific feature to make all of this easier, and that is folders. Special thanks to Nocturne Cat for pointing this one out. You can make a smart folder with dash dash sref as the filter, and all of your images made using style reference will show up in one place. Now, actually inside of this folder, it will include both sref codes and any picture made with a style reference. It's not the perfect solution to keeping track of your codes, but at least you can find them all in one place. Tip number 15, chaotic blend. I want you to image prompt two or more images together and then use the chaos and stylize values. Because if you took two pictures and image prompted them together and you did this 100 times, even though there are 4 billion seeds, you'll get the same looking generations every time. That's just sort of how blending works right now. But there are two parameters that you can use to spice up the generation. Those are chaos and stylize. Chaos is set to zero by default and can be any value above zero and below 100, while stylize is at 100 for default and ranges between zero and 1000. Out of both of these, I think chaos is more important to this demonstration. Take a look at this generation with chaos 5, and then look at what happens to the grid as we raise the chaos value. Chaos 20, each image is starting to look a little more different from one another. Chaos 20 with stylize 500 and then look at Chaos 50. Now these are extremely different from where we first started. You can even include the weird parameter, dash dash w, zero to 3000. I don't really recommend this one though because things can get pretty weird. Tip number 16, the photo shoot switcheroo. Here's a bit of a random photo shoot trick and it's really simple. Generate a picture of a subject in a certain style, any style, and then remix the prompt and change the style. It's really that simple, but it can result in some cool pictures, like taking this hippie into a cyberpunk vibe. A hippie style love portrait, remix strong, cyberpunk style love portrait. Are there other ways to get this outcome? Like, yeah, probably, but this is one thing you can try. And it also works when referencing specific people, as in character reference. And then one extra bonus tip, after you've remixed once, try remixing again, but this time not changing anything. It's a little way to go farther into the algorithm. So you go remix strong and then hit enter. And maybe we end up with something like these. Tip number 17, stickers galore. Now this tip won't work if you have a very specific logo that you want to replicate, at least not right now. But if you have a general idea for your logo or your brand includes initials like mine, FTP, here's what you can do to create a lot of cool sticker ideas. We're going to use an extremely basic prompt and then include dash dash sref random as well as the repeat parameter. So something like this, a logo for FTP dash dash sref random 
and then dash dash repeat followed by a value. I'm going with repeat five and all that means is that it's going to run this prompt five times. Because we have sref random on, we're going to see five different random styles be generated for us. They're not all going to be gold, but we can find some really unique images here that we can use for our stickers. Like out of all these, I think these are so cool. That's amazing. Remember, sref random plus the repeat parameter. Tip number 18, family matters. Midjourney is actually really good at creating believable families of characters when used in one prompt. Now, I guess I suggest keeping it as minimal as possible, like two characters tops, maybe three, because the more you ask for, the more of a challenge it is for the bot. Again, at least right now. I also recommend trying your prompt in style raw or including a style reference like Vogue or Unsplash, something to get a realistic image. Otherwise, your generation might end up as an illustration. And feel free to mention any specific features or attributes that your family might have. Like here we have something simple, a portrait of a mother and her son, silver spiky hair. Really simple prompt. You could try a mother and her daughter, Unsplash. One of the reasons I recommend something like Unsplash is so that we don't end up with illustrations like this. And wouldn't you agree that these characters really do look like they're related? You could try a portrait of a boy and his grandfather dressed like gentlemen, that works well too. You could get a little crazy with something like an orc family. Although this one doesn't always work, sometimes the kids end up human and that's just a little weird. I thought this generation worked out really well. Here's a portrait of a family, three generations, a young girl with her mother and grandmother, blonde hair and blue eyes, unsplash. I'd say, yeah, these people do look like they're related, right? Tip number 19, aging through time. Speaking of familiarity, here's how you can see the same character at different ages, and a special thanks to filmmaker Zach for this tip. For your prompt, you'll want to mention maybe a camera type, an initial age, and some defining feature. I think hairstyle works pretty well because it's easily adjusted. Like an iPhone photo of a 15 year old boy with long black hair. You also might want to lower the stylized value and use style raw to make the bot listen to you more. Then the trick is to use the remix feature to adjust the age and description of the prompt. Make sure you use Remix Strong, I think it works way better than Subtle. So instead of a 15 year old boy with long hair, we're going to change it to a 30 year old man with medium hair. You can also use the same seed number, but I'm not sure how important that really is. I'll show you an example of that later on. And we'll get something like this, but then we can change it even more. And eventually end up with an iPhone photo of a 50 year old man dressed like a gentleman with short black hair. I think that's a pretty cool transition of the character. Let me show you one more example. Here I started with an iPhone photo of a 30 year old woman with blonde hair and blue eyes. Style raw, style I zero, and seed number 8249. We'll go into Remix, and then a quick way to make more of these changes is to use permutations. So instead of a 30 year old woman, I can input curly brackets and then a bunch of different ages. 10, 15, 20, 25, 40, 50, etc, etc. You can write as many ages as you'd like. Now, not every single generation will look like the original character. It's not quite working like that, but at least one of them should be pretty close. So there's no, no, no. But I think that one works. Then here they are at 15, 20, 25, 30, 40, 45 maybe, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. That's pretty cool. And tip number 20, cosplay, am I right? A great way to generate a character in different outfits is to use the word cosplay in your prompt. You can use this for different events or themes or entire TV shows like Star Wars. Here I have a woman cosplaying as a Jedi. I use this character as a character reference, a little bit of chaos, and a character weight of zero. And we can see her cosplaying as a Jedi. A little extra bonus tip is to maybe try this with your personalization code. I don't know what it'll look like for you, but you might find some really cool pictures this way. And if you want to learn more about how to generate different photo shoots using Midjourney, you can check out this video right now. I hope you're doing well, take care, and I'll see you next time. Peace.